you may not have been prepared to find what you find as you get close, which is this beautiful woman lying in her bed, except this is not the usual bed. This seems to be her deathbed. One of the interesting things about this piece in terms of its body language is that the figure is indeed dead. But at the same time, there is a radiation of peace or inner strength, less tangible qualities that are important to what this piece is all about. The body of this woman kind of disappears under those fronds, under the fabric, and perhaps your attention then focuses on her face. Her face was remarked on even at the time as having a half smile, and I think that that's symbolic. It guides the viewer. It gives the viewer some measure of hope. If you stand at the head of this bed, looking down at her towards her feet, you may be struck by this incredible flow of lines and the braiding of her hair that continues a pattern then into the rest of her body. To my mind, there's a real dichotomy as to what's going on in the very calm, serene facial features, the folding of her arms across her chest, compared with the agitated drapery with all sorts of movement in the folds, rippling, shimmering, and then the long palm frond that covers the length of her body. This is really where the activity of the piece is, the physicality, compared with the serenity of her face. We're looking at a young man, probably early teens, who in real life is a model, a German boy who lived in Munich. He's holding a cigar in his, uh, which is that left hand, and has a basket under his right arm. The basket contains a cauliflower, and the secret of the whole painting is the boot, or the part of a boot that shows. He's posed in the picture as a cobbler's apprentice. Cincinnati artist Frank Duvenek painted the cobbler's apprentice while studying in Munich in 1877. His brilliant liquid brushwork assumes equal importance with telling the story of a modern working boy. Duvenek would return to Cincinnati and become an influential teacher. His new emphasis on the artist's hand and the pictorial surface revolutionized American painting. 
the greatest light we see is, of course, on his forehead with another little spot of light on the end of his nose, which is kind of fun for visitors to point out. Then another spot of light would be the cauliflower. We have discussion over whether this is truly a cauliflower or whether it might be a cabbage of some kind, but the experts tell us it's a cauliflower. And then, of course, the third spot of light is the boy's arm and the point of light at the end of the cigar. In fact, I've even had children say, oh, it's burning, it's burning.